Hello everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We're going to be at the bench again today and today we are going to review the workings of an MP10 Renishaw probe. Originally I was going to make this a disassembly video but as you can see we're already torn to bits and we're going to make this an assembly video. The probe was just absolutely soaked in oil and it was oozing everywhere every time I cleaned it. So rather than do the video covered in oil, I took it apart and cleaned it all up. And let's, uh, let's review all the pieces parts first and then if you're not interested in how it gets assembled you can just kind of get an idea of what's in this thing and uh, then we'll assemble it all together. So we'll start down here, so, so this side's the business end, and then we'll move our way up to the machine mount side, and this one, of course, I'm using a 40 taper um, for my machine. So to start with, you have a stylus, and there are all different types, styles, shapes, sizes, materials, um, you know, stylists can be unlimited so this one is a long reach um, ruby stylist this one that came with it and that's actually the one I wanted so I kind of lucked out if you recall this was an eBay find um, I don't think there's anything wrong with this uh, stylus it looks good so we're gonna put it on and then we'll go and calibrate it um, on the machine so you got your stylist now the next major part of the probe is the actual um, sensing switch. So this part here actually contains the switch contacts and these little two electrodes on the back side um, are the contact for the switch. If you put an ohmmeter across these you can see it open and close as you as you push on it. It's normally closed and then it opens as you push on it. So if you wanted to you could try to find just this part on eBay and then uh, machine your own mount for it and hook this up and you could have a nice high quality professional grade um, probe um, at a probably reasonable price. So I saw a lot of three of these on eBay last year. They went for a hundred bucks. So you can get these pretty cheap uh, if you look hard enough. I don't know what the MSRP on these is new. Um, I'm going to be looking for one myself. This one's got a little ding in it. It uh, doesn't affect the operation and it's perfectly fine. Um, but if I can get one at a good price, I'll, I'll certainly buy one. So on, on this side, I've got this disassembled already. There are, there are two diaphragms and this is a really good design. Um, I have no complaints about any of the design or quality from Renishaw at all. Um, I know they charge a lot, but uh, you're definitely getting a lot of machine work for your money. I mean, the machine work in this one part alone is pretty intricate. So they use a double diaphragm. The inner diaphragm um, is not user replaceable. So they, they suggest sending this back if this inner diaphragm were to break. Uh, and it's, it's good. So we don't have to send it back. And then there's an outer diaphragm. Um, that protects and this one is user replaceable so if you tear this one um, you can replace this and then it is retained um, by this small little retaining nut. On the back side we have an o-ring groove and then we also have um, this little nut. Now this is important because this one controls the spring tension inside of this guy so when your stylus uh, is screwed on, there's a spec that says how much weight it should take to deflect um, or how much force it should take to deflect the stylus. Now what you can do is you can just set this on your counter and then just hang that amount of weight to equal the force off of it and then see if it trips the probe. Um, if it doesn't trip you can loosen this up. If it trips too soon you can tighten this up and that's how you can um, set your your spring tension just by hanging a little weight on this and using gravity to provide your uh, a constant force and then um, with the extended stylus you actually lower the 
the force gets lowered because the lever arm is longer. Uh, but they, they don't recommend adjusting the force for the longer stylus. So that's what that guy does. So then in the, in the middle, we've got the body of the probe. And this contains two things. One, it contains the battery. So the battery goes in that big hole in the middle there. And then it also contains the electronics. So there's the electronics for the probe. Um, I can see two circuit boards. I don't know if there's a third one. There looks like there might be room in there for a third one. Um, but I don't know, and I don't want to really take it apart any farther than this. I don't have to, so. Now the circuit board, um, of course, will drive the, the optics and you know do all the control, measure the trigger, and send the data. We did a video on the OMM and how the data gets streamed from this to the OMM. Now also inside the electronics, I don't think you're going to be able to see it on camera, maybe just barely, there's a three set of dip switches inside there and that's how you can configure the probe. Um, so switch one is for what they call debounce, how fast you can turn the probe on and off. Switch two is a timer, so you can set this probe to time out and turn itself off after 33 seconds or 134 seconds. Nice round numbers, I don't know where they came, came up with those numbers. But uh, And then the third switch is to say whether or not you want the probe to time out and turn itself off, or if you specifically want to send the signal from the OMM to turn it off. Um, so if you select that switch, a start signal from the OMM will turn the probe on, and then a start signal from the OMM will turn the probe off. Then there's also this jumper right here. Now what that jumper does is that enables a switch debounce on the sensing switch. Now they don't recommend using this jumper unless you absolutely have to, because what it's going to do is it's going to add a delay time between the time that the probe tip actually touches the part and the time that the probe tells the machine it's touched. Uh, and you know that switch debounce is if you're in a high vibration environment and the probe is giving off false trips. So you can manually set this jumper here um, if you need to. So that's the the main probe body. And again, I mean just beautiful machine work on this. I mean. That's a lot of machine work for a part. Looks pretty cool. So let's move up the road here. Then we've got the battery pieces. So this part goes on one side and then this part goes on the other side. And it uh, sandwiches together um, to hold your nine volt battery. So that's pretty self-explanatory. There are two O-rings um, to go on that. And they are both identical. They put these little weird um, nubs on there to retain the O-ring. I don't know if I necessarily like that, but it works. Uh, it just means that this is a proprietary O-ring now, and you have to order it from Renishaw. Uh, then these are the screws that hold the battery together. These little, these are little tiny O-rings. So they put these little tiny O-rings um, in the holes to retain the screws in the battery holder. So these screws get retained. Um, by those tiny o-rings. That's a pretty nice feature so the screws don't fall out when you're changing the battery. Uh, then moving up we've got the first mounting plate. Now this plate mounts to the body um, like so. And there's two options for this. You can either mount it flush like this and that's what probably the majority of people do. And then the second option is you can put uh, an eight millimeter ball in here. So there's a cup here and a cup here. And then that ball will generate a very tiny gap here. And then what you can do is you can have angular adjustment on the probe. Now when it's mounted like this you still have an adjustment you just have the XY adjustment on the probe to center it in your spindle. Now, the angular adjustment on the probe may or may not be critical for you. There's two reasons to adjust for the angular error. 
Um, if you recall my spindle video when I did the uh, spindle runout video, uh, my spindle has zero runout at the gauge line, but it has a thaw runout 12 inches down. And the reason for that is the taper bore is not perfectly in line with the axes of rotation. So in my case, if I put a ball in there, I could angle this probe, and as long as the probe goes in the spindle the exact same way every time, um, which it should because of these drive dogs, um, I can comp out that angular error so that even though I have a slight angular error in my spindle, the probe will be perfectly straight, and then I can offset it so that it will be perfectly straight and perfectly center. Now, why would you need to do that? Uh, two reasons. If you're probing a diameter of a bore that's really deep and it's really close to the diameter of your probe tip, if you have some angular error as your probe tip goes in, the shaft of the probe could contact the wall of your bore. So you need to make sure that the probe is perfectly straight and will go in the bore straight. Um, the other reason is, in my case, because I have that angular error, if you change the probe tip to a shorter probe and you're just using the XY centering uh, screws, when you change the length of this, you either need to do a probe tip cal, and your machine is going to have to be able to cal out probe tip offsets, uh, or you're going to have to readjust your XY centering every time you change your probe tip. Uh, if you compensate out for that error, theoretically, if you get it perfect, you can change the probe tip without having to readjust anything, uh, and, your, and your probe cal um, should be spot on, theoretically. Uh, so those are the two reasons you'd want to use that angular cal. Uh, I am not going to do so. Just centering is good enough for me, uh, and I only have one stylus, so that's good enough for me, and I don't, I don't see a, a need um, for all my use cases yet of having to change my stylus at all. Um, so then the last piece is, you know, how we actually physically connect to the machine. So they have different uh, size tapers and HSKs and all kinds of different um, back ends to accommodate the different types of uh, tooling systems. Uh, and then this piece here basically interfaces um, with this, and then you get a cone in the center. And that's what these two big set screws are for. So these two set screws are coming here. So the procedure is that you first put this in here like that. Then you very loosely um, insert these screws so they're just touching and holding this piece flush with this face. Then this piece has the four set screws around it. And those set screws push on this lip. Okay. And then if you look at this piece, this can slide, okay? So by tightening and loosening these four set screws, that is how you get that XY adjustment um, on the probe to adjust, you know, for any run out or error in your spindle so that your probe is, is uh, concentric and, you know, always in the same spot. So that is pretty much all the pieces, parts of a MP10 Renishaw probe. Now the, the newer probes are, you know, very similar in design, very similar in function, almost identical in function. Um, you know, they're, they're just newer pieces, parts. So I'm gonna put this back together now and you can choose to watch or you can bail. You know, it's up to you on what you need to get out of the video. Um, one thing that you're gonna need to assemble the probe um, is you're gonna need uh, some lubricant um, now I'm specifically using some Crystal Lube MCG 11, um, one, 111, 111. Uh, the only reason why I'm using this is uh, I have it in stock. It's it's pretty pricey lubricant, but it's really good for O-ring lubes. Uh, it's also oxygen compatible, so in case you plan on operating your probe in an all oxygen environment, you know you'll be safe. Does a joke. All right, so. I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of lube on the o-ring and we'll put the nose of the probe back on first. You only need a little bit and then we'll put this o-ring in. Now anytime you work with o-rings um, a lot of people will use you know dental picks or brass hooks or whatever to get an o-ring out you just have to pinch it and it will come out 
You know, it's, e it's, it's that easy. You don't need to go digging um, for gold to get an O-ring out. Uh, what you end up doing is you end up scratching the O-ring groove. I'm just going to put a little lube on, on the inside of the bore here. Uh, you end up scratching the O-ring groove and making a leak path. So, you know, don't do that. Now, when assembling this, there are two spring terminals here, uh, one here and one here. You want to make sure that you line up um, the probe terminals with those uh, spring points. So we're going to put this together like this. Then we'll also uh, line up the, the screw holes, and then it just pushes together, just like that. And then there's uh, three Allen keys with uh, lock washers that go in here. Now if you download the Renishaw manuals and you look at the manuals, they will give you uh, the exact torque specs to tighten these screws to. I think it's like uh, two or three foot pounds. Don't quote me on that though. Okay, so then once that's in, the next thing that we want to do is we want to reinstall the diaphragm. So again, we're just going to put a little tiny bit of lube on the um, front and back side of the diaphragm. And you want to do this so that when you screw that cap on, the cap will slide on the diaphragm and not uh, fold it up uh, as it's compressing the diaphragm into the sealing surface. Okay, so then once we got lube on the diaphragm, then we'll stretch it over and it goes over this center section here first, like that. And then it seats in there just like that. And then uh, this part threads on. Whoa, hands are slippery now. I'm just gonna put a little bit of lube on the threads on this guy. Cause this one's aluminum on aluminum. Okay, so then you just finger tighten that up, okay? So now the front end of the probe is back assembled and we've got our main sealing surface on there. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reinstall this piece, the mounting plate. Now to do this, um, you're going to need a little bit of a stubby Allen wrench. So this is the Allen wrench you can get from Renishaw. This is a standard Allen wrench. You can see that the Renishaw version is a little bit shorter and I'll show you why. So this guy goes on like, like so. Now if we put the ball in there, these four screws are your angularity adjustment. So loosening and tightening these will change the angle of the probe. Um, if you so do that. We're not going to do that, so we're just going to torque them in and see how that Allen wrench um, fits in there. That one does not. So if you buy one of these, you'll have to hit it up on your grinder to make it fit. So then we'll tighten these guys down. Okay, so now all we have left to do is attach our spindle taper. Now this one's a little bit tough. Um, because this ring has been previously tightened down on, I noticed it's got a little bit of uh, concentricity error in it. So we're going to put a little bit of lube on it and uh, see if we can get it back in there. It was very difficult coming out. I had to pull pretty hard to get it out, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to push pretty hard to get it back in. Um, the problem is getting it started square. There we go. Okay. Now you can see, without those screws in there, we've got quite a bit of movement, you know, in the in the XY. 
Okay, and that's where your adjustment comes in. So first, what we want to do is we want to put these larger set screws in up top. Okay. And you want them loose still. Don't don't uh, don't snug them up yet. Because once you snug these, that also helps lock in the uh, XY adjustment. So once these are tight, it pulls up on those two cones and uh, it makes it hard to get everything out. So you can see there's no movement anymore. And then once I loosen these again, now the movement comes back. Okay, so that's what we want. Now we can put these set screws in. So then leave this loose and then when you put it in the machine, you adjust these four set screws um, to, get it, to get the probe stylus centered. So then once we have that all assembled, the last uh, piece of the puzzle that we wanna do is the battery. Now if you, look in the, if you look in the battery hole on one side, these two gray bars have a um, bare metal spot on them. On um, uh, this side, they do not. So this side is the side that gets the electrodes for the battery. Um, don't forget your O-ring. Now these O-rings worked uh, remarkably well. There was really no oil past the o-rings all the oil was in all the gaps and grooves and threads of all the screws until the o-ring um, so these o-rings did seal very well there was no oil inside now this o-ring is um, not uh, symmetrical so you got to put it in and there's four little holes in there in the center screen for you. And you just put this in here and then just press the little plugs in the holes and then the o-ring should uh, sit nicely in the groove with those uh, oops, with those plugs in the holes. Okay. So then we can put this on the side with the metal tabs And then there is uh, one retaining screw that goes in. Darn it. Goes in right there, and that retains the back side of the battery while you put the battery in. Okay. So then we're going to put these over these o-rings back in first. These are not got a crooked. Uh, these are not sealing o-rings, so they they really don't need any lube. You can put lube on them if you want, but they are not sealing o-rings. They they make no seal whatsoever. All they are there for Actually, you know what? Easier way to do this. All they are there for is to retain these screws for you so they don't fall out while you're changing the battery. I got those little uh, retainer o-rings uh, pressed in there so now I'm gonna finish assembling the battery compartment so then there's a picture here on how to insert the battery and then also what they did uh, is inside the battery bay one of the holes is larger than the other for the 9 volt so it's pretty 
obvious on which way to, uh, to put the battery in. So we can put the battery in. And then what I do is I just kind of just hold it together while I screw the two Allen heads down. Now these two screws engage with this side and the clamps it together and seals those two o-rings. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Then when you're all done, uh, you take your stylus and you can screw your stylus on. And then I think I had a smaller, I just used an Allen key and put in the hole. I put my smaller Allen away. Uh, just put you know, a rod or an Allen key in there just to, just to torque the stylus a little bit. You don't need to, you know, reef on it. You know, you don't want to twist up the switch mechanism in there. You just want to just snug it just a little bit past, you know, finger tight without a tool. And then uh, there you have it. There's your Renishaw MP10 fully assembled. If you want to know how to disassemble it, uh, watch the video backwards. So thank you for watching. Um, what we've got coming up I have been working hard, so this, this uh, probe project has been dragging out. I did get the OMM put back together, as you can see from our last video that we did. And then also, I finished all the schematics, and I built a little tiny circuit board uh, that we're going to need. So I'm going to do a video on this circuit board and the schematic on how to wire it all into the Fidel machine. And then... I also needed a way to mount this, so I machined this piece here, which is just a piece of bar stock that I took a chunk out of, and then the probe, you know, bolts onto that piece there. Here, I'll put it together real quick, give you a quick demo. So I've got a video coming up on machining of these parts, so those who like to watch machining will get a little bit of machining. I know we haven't done... Um, videos on machining in a while. Okay, so then that bolts like that, and then we made this part here, and then this slides in there like that. And now I can, you know, aim the probe, bolt it to the top of the machine cabinet, and all is good. So I got a video coming up on the machining of this, and then the schematics and circuitry of this. Um, and then we finally got all the pieces parts done to put this thing in the machine finally uh, This has been kind of dragging on so in any event um, Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the mp10 uh, Assembly video and uh, we'll see you on the next one